Okay, <laughs> we're on the internet now. Let's ask the questions that have come in from the viewers. Black Knight asked Jeffrey Gettleman. Oh, there you are. Is this are. visual or just sound? This is visual. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But on the but on the computer, you know, on the computer, so, yeah. right? Uh, for all the resources and humanitarian aid they are given, why can't African nations develop? Ooh, well, I think some of them have, right? Not probably because of the aid, but there's there's a lot of African success stories, right? Definitely, and there's also a long history of uh, a lot of these countries have tried to. Uh, do what European nations in the United States did in hundreds of years. They're trying to do it in you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So I think it's very high expectations to expect the same level of development or even democracy uh, in these countries that we all associate with Europe and the United States. People used to call Africa the dark continent. I just pointed that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? They might have development that we don't recognize as development. But in in Africa, it's development. Right. You know, running running water. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, look, there are parts of this country that are third world. Mm -hmm. There are parts of Africa, I'm sure, which are much more preferable to stay in than, than parts of, you know, Appalachia or something. A friend of mine traveled some, to some uh, third world countries, and she was amazed when she came back here how much to see how much we waste drinking water. Oh, you see yes. that too? Yeah, well, one nice thing about Africa is there's not a lot of waste. People recycle everything. They they care for their resources. Um, you see people wearing secondhand clothes. I mean, it, it, that's one thing I like about it. It's kind of a statement that we could live with a lot less. But it is the dark continent. <laughs> it is. But there's a certain there's a. S could it be because there are people of color there? Yeah. No. <laughs> but like when when Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, remember that story that they they first got together in I think it was Namibia, mm -hmm. and their lovemaking was so powerful it scared the natives. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> no, I, I read it in Us magazine. That's just must be true. <laughs> no, really, that it it literally or it scared the animals or something. It it, it was so powerful it was <laughs> scaring. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I read that, and I believe everything I read, like the guy in Spinal Tap. Okay. <laughs> what is it with this? Is for you, Michelle Brown. Okay. What, what is it with women's latest fascination with the book? Oh, the bit we just did, Fifty Shades of Grey. What? It, but that is a phenomenon. Boy, uh, you know, that I have is to a tell you, I, I flew out here yesterday, and I read the first volume on the airplane, and I bought the second volume on my iPad. I'm in Paris to say, I don't know what it is. It's it's a fascinating you know, book. It's it, interesting. It's good. It's my, my wife has read all three. That's 150 Shades of Grey right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. She, she has not asked for a divorce yet. I have not and, left <laughs> the house in five days. <laughs> and, and Mitt Romney has a book, Fifty Shades of White. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's about S and M, right? It, it's it's it, about. It's a, you know some people call it like the feminist dream. It, you know it, it, it's romantic. There's a lot of I guess you call it S and M. There's a lot of very heavy duty wild sex in the book, but there, but also at the same time the 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 female who's the lead character she says no, she says yes, she's in charge, she's not in charge. It's. I don't know how you wrap your hands around it. All I can say is it's it's interesting and it's it's must read. That, <laughs> it's a must read trilogy. Sounds like every That's woman like I ever. That, that sounds like every woman uh, I ever knew. I mean, they're in charge. They're not in charge. Yeah. They, they want to be. They don't want to be. You yeah. know, I mean, they're complicated beings. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It, it all depends on timing. Yeah. yeah. I always say if, if, if you're I always, if you're married 20 years and you come home and you throw your wife down on the kitchen table, she'd love it. Yeah. But don't do it on the first date. Yeah. <laughs> I had the same reaction when I read uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Uh. I just went crazy. <laughs> I, I couldn't leave the house. You, Bill, went, you went to your man cave. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> well, um, let's go from that to, is the current economic crisis in Europe a repudiation against having a single currency? Oh, good God. God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, try to follow that. <laughs> yeah, that's Aren't you glad enough. you're not pick, an pick economist? Pick another one. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Come on, yeah, I'm sure they're still even... with us. Oh, God. Let me take a oh, shot at that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. What was the question again? The question was, uh, <laughs> is the current economic crisis in Europe a repudiation against having a single currency? Totally. Totally. Uh, <laughs> I think there's a lot of bitterness. <laughs> No, I mean, they're saying that Greece might leave the Eurozone. Do you mm -hmm. think that's possible? It's possible. Yeah. Well, no, sure. it's, that's a near certainty. 
I mean, that's that's almost a done deal. Really? That's what yeah. I was going to say. No, the question now is. <laughs> all right, yeah, just to, you know, that, that, all right, yeah. No, that, no. That, the question, is, gonna the question is how many how many dominoes fall afterwards. That's but the no, question. No, no, this yeah. is this and is. Does, how does it impact? But that? is that? By the way, this yeah. is hell on earth. I mean, this is you know 50 percent unemployment among young people in Greece and Spain. So you know, from Fifty Shades of Grey to serious stuff. This is a, this is an ongoing catastrophe, and it's a political catastrophe too. Take a look at, at, at some of the movements that are on the rise in Europe right now. Golden Dawn in Greece, Jobbik in Hungary, and tell me, take, take a look at those photos and ask if you don't think that you just stepped through a time portal back to the year 1932. This is scary, scary it stuff. It is. And then you look at the U.S. I mean, we have our problems in the minority groups and the youth and the uneducated. Huge ones like this. I mean, you have 50% or higher in black teenage unemployment, and it's been going on for five years. I mean, these kids, after not working for five years, they won't have the requisite skills to be able to. And then you'll find all of these problems lasting for a long, long time. And you must see that in Africa all the time. I mean, I was down there with the Ibus and the Yoruba in oh, yeah. Nigeria. It's excellent the pronunciation. Baluba, too. Yeah. yeah. But I, but I love it. They were all my students. And it's amazing that what goes on in Wait, Africa. Wait, you taught in Africa? Well, I give lectures down there. I don't think that's You say easy. down there, like it's... Well, it's north-south. <laughs> on the 405. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> down there. But I think, why, why would people want to... Why would people want to work in Greece? Because there's just so many fun things to do when you're not working. I mean, you've got the islands. That was Paul. By the way, that's the ruins. A, that's... Let me say, the Greeks actually work longer hours than the Germans. This really? is a great myth. It's a tremendous myth that it's all because they're lazy. They, they have screwed up policy. They made a lot of mistakes. They were enabled in making a lot of mistakes by German banks that lent them money, no questions asked. So this is, you know, don't, don't buy into the German notion that, that it's all their fault. It's not. This was a collective mistake, and if the, uh, we're going to see whether the Europeans can get their act together, and if not, wow. But the question I would ask you, Paul, I mean, in this one, is, you know, how is that, I mean, here's the stimulus spending and all that deficit spending that went on in Greece. How is that not the there same as the There was never stimulus spending in Greece. There was never. They, they ran deficits in good years because they were out of control. That was, uh, had nothing to do with stimulus. But that is the and what they people have with, done your, with now. your frame. I what mean, they've seriously. actually done now is they've had enormous cuts in spending in a depression. And the result is to make the depression really deeper. And we say our depression is not as bad as the Great Depression, but theirs is. And that's the lesson. If you want to know who could make us like Greece, it is those Republicans in Congress who want us to do even more austerity in the face of a depression. I don't All right. It's a holiday. Let's go drink and have hot dogs. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on June 8th. All right. Real Time with Bill Maher. Ask Bill and his guests your questions right after the show at HBO.com.